Hello and welcome my dear grade 10 elite students to my channel Mathematics Made Easy. This is Ms. Ruchika welcoming you to today's revision session. In this video, we are going to be covering from your exam coverage for your term 1 math exam from learning objective 4, solve quadratic equations by factoring special products. In this video, we are going to be solving question 15 to question 32. So let's get started. So in this session, we are covering learning objective 4, solve quadratic equation by factoring special products. As you see, we are covering questions 15 to 32 that you see on the screen. I will be solving some of these questions for you and a similar manner you would be able to solve the remaining question by using factoring special products. These questions are given on page 31 of your math book. Okay, so let's begin by solving each equation by factoring. Factoring means we need to find the value of x, the roots, and then you also have to check your solution. So this is a square equation. As you see, this is x square. So can we write the 64 as a perfect square? Yes, we can. Let's write it as 8 square. Now, we need to solve this quadratic equation by using special products. So there can be more than one method of solving this equation. I will give you... Uh, one method. So I will move this x square on the other side. It changes sign becomes minus h square equal to zero. Nothing on the right side. So can I use a plus b a minus b? Yes, I can. So these are the two values. So when you solve either x minus h is zero, the first bracket is zero or the second one x plus h is zero. Hmm? This is called zero product property. What is this called at this step? zero product property and why it is called zero product because the product of these two terms this is the first term this is the second term when you multiply it is equal to zero so zero product property then each of the bracket is zero so how much is x eight how much is x minus eight so there are two values of x that you got as your solution now are both the solution that you'll have to check and to check your solution you will use the method of substitution so you will take these values of x, put it back in the original equation. So let's put x equal to 8 in the equation x square equal to 64. So when I put 8, it is 8 square which is 64. So both sides are equal. This is a correct solution. Let's do similarly for minus 8. When I put x as minus 8 in this original equation which is given to you, minus 8 square is on the left side and on the right side is 64. 4, which is also equal because minus 8 multiplied with minus 8 is also 64. So both sides are equal. So that means both are the correct solution. So what are the solution for question 15? There are two values x equal to plus 8, x equal to minus 8. So together I can write both the solution in this manner. So this is how we factor uh, and find each of the solution for this square equation. Similarly, you can do for this. Again, you see 100 is a perfect square. So it will be x square minus 10 square. So one value is x plus 10. One is x minus 10. You can put that back in the equation and you will get both as the solution after you check it by the substitution. Let's do the last one. This is also a square equation. So x square, I'm just interchanging both in writing, is equal to 289. Now think, 289 is a perfect square of which number? Try, yes, you're right, it's 17, so I can write x squared minus 17 squared is 0. Again, I use a plus b, a minus b property, so the value of x would be plus minus 17. These are the two roots you can check by substitution. And before we change the slide and do the remaining question, I will write here the algebraic identity I use. So I use a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b multiplied with a minus b. This property is also known as difference of squares. Think why it is called difference of square because you see difference, you see subtraction and it is of two terms which are perfect squares. So here if you see this is square, this is square and there is difference. So this is difference of squares. Can you see? So we are able to apply this property. Learn it, remember it. This is an algebraic property that will help you to factor these kind of equations. Now comes a very important part of the lesson. In this part, we are going to be using algebraic identity for 
uh, solving these questions and for factoring these quadratic functions. So let's see the equation a plus b whole square equal to a square b square plus 2ab and if it is minus sign then the only thing that changes is the sign in the product. So what is the condition? See here you will see square of one term square of another term and plus times 2 multiplied with ab similarly here a square here b square and minus sign of 2ab. So let's see these two identities and apply them to solve question 21, 22 and 23. So first observe, do you see perfect square? What is this term? What is this term? Yes, they are perfect square. So 4x square is the perfect square of 2x square. 49 is the perfect square of 7. And look at this term, it has minus sign. So can I write it in this form 2ab? So a is the first term 2x b is the second term 7 and this is plus. So is this matching? Let's see. 2 multiplied with 2, 4 multiplied with 7, 28. Yes, this is the term. So I can write this is a square, this is b square, this is minus 2ab. So it is going to be equal to a minus b whole square. So a is 2x, b is 7. So this is equal to this. Huh? Just imagine this is a square, this is b square, this is minus 2ab. So how much is your a? 2x, how much is your b? 7. I hope it is clear. So I write it in this form. So this thing is equal to 0. So if you see there is repeated root. So this is possible if 2x minus 7 is 0 or x is 7 by 2. So because there was square, this is going to be repeated roots. Okay, so this will come x equal to 7 by 2, 2 times. Similarly, solve question 22. I will now do here 23. What is the difference here? Do you see perfect square? Look at 16x square. Yes, it is the perfect square of 4x. Look at these two numbers. When 4 goes here, it becomes 13 minus 4. And this is minus 24x. So 13 minus 4 is 9, which is a perfect square of 3. So I can write 3 square. 2 times 4x times 3. So now are we able to apply the property? This is a square, b square minus 2ab. So this is going to be a minus b whole square. So what's your a? a is 4x. What's your b? It is 3. And what is this term? 2 times a multiplied with b. So if this is 0, then 4x minus 3 is 0. Or x is 3 by 4. So again, it's a repeated root because the degree of the equation is 2. So this is going to be x equal to 3 by 4, 2 times. So this is how you use algebra to factor question 21, 20, 23. I would urge you to solve similarly the remaining question 24, 25, 26 and check your answers in the end of this video. So let's now solve question 27, 28, 29. Uh, here again, if you see, these are square equation. You have x square, x square, x square. Let's calculate the other side. So I move this 100 here. This is already here. So can I write x square as minus 15 square? Here x square is minus 10 square. And here x square as minus 13 minus 12. So it is minus 25, which is minus 5 square. Now, if you see here carefully, there is a negative sign which is extra. Hmm? So, we cannot apply the difference of square property. So, in order to get our x, in order to factor them, we will take the square root of both sides. Now, let's see what will happen. Because we are taking the square root of a negative number, square root of negative 1 is a iota. It is an imaginary Part or imaginary solution or you may have also studied about complex numbers so we are going to get complex roots here so x the two roots will be plus minus 5 iota here for this one similarly here x is going to be plus minus why i'm taking plus minus because uh, there are going to be two roots and we are taking this time square root of negative numbers so 10 iota Similarly, here x is plus minus 15 iota. So there are imaginary roots. You may write it as the first root is positive. The second root is negative. Now, if you 
uh, have to check your solution then you may again do the same method of substitution substitute these values in the original equation and check whether they are being satisfied or not only then you can confirm and say that these are the two rules in this question question 27 28 29 we have imaginary rules so this is the answer key for uh, the questions 15 to 32. Check your answer and let me know in the comment section how many of you got all answers correct. And I hope this video helped you for understanding how to factor using special products the following quadratic equations. This brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you for watching the video. And if you found the video useful, make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Also, share this video as much as you can with all your grade 10 elite students so that they can benefit. <laughs>